Welcome to the Master's House. Yeah. 
outpouring of God's Spirit. I feel that there are things happening right now that things are really going to take off with the church, with His people, all those who have vision, for without it we perish. I believe that our new president, President Trump, I think he's going to do an excellent job. And I believe we have a duty. And that is to pray for our leaders. And regardless of who you voted for, I'm not going to ask you. Let's back them up. Stand with our government and pray. And pray for a mighty revival. Uh, President-elect Trump got 81% of the evangelical vote. So I believe he's going to do his best to look out for evangelicals. And that means a lot. I may not agree with everything that he has said, but I agree with his policies. And I think he's going to do his absolute best to keep his word. How about you? Let's give him a hand. Follow with me if you would. Joel, the second chapter, verse 28 and 29. Follow these verses, write them down, and then take them home and study. That way I don't have to spend too much time on these. Because as I said, there's about six different messages with key points in it that I wanted to hit today. So I'll do my best. You bear with me. Follow with me in your Bibles. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams 
Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. And I feel that 2016 is a special time. 2008 through 2015 were trying times. We went through some trying times. But I believe that God has set this people in a place to do a great work. Many others across the globe. I believe it's time to rally with the Lord. To listen. Close to what the Lord tells you to do. How to act. How to pray. To do what the Lord would have you do. Not us following in our own way. But following after the master as he said we should follow. He said now is the acceptable time. Say not four months then comes the harvest. We're getting ready to show some videos on Wednesday night. Where I want all the ladies and all the men to please be here. There are eight videos that we're going to watch. And they're on the husband. They're on the wife. They're on the children. They are about raising children. They're about strong-willed children and how to deal with them. So I believe all of us, the legacy of an individual, all of us, there is something in it for you. And I want to see everybody there. Now, we have a number of people out today that are sick with the flu. So, Brother Art, would you stand? Let's stand and have a word of prayer. There are many that are sick. And I believe the Lord can touch. I'm going now on my 11th week. Thank the Lord. So I'm excited. Are you excited about the times that are at hand? It's time for vision. Without it, we perish. And I have been using that scripture for months as the Lord laid it on my heart. I thought, well, Lord, I have used that quite a few times. When the Lord says, I want it used, and I want it given again, and I don't argue with him. And our conscience, I believe, the Lord speaks through our conscience. He leads us down the path we should go, and he keeps us from going down the wrong path. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Say not four months, then come the harvest. Now is the time to invite people and let them worship Come to the champions of faith, ladies of grace. In every facet of this church, we're going to move. We're going to visit. It is time to pack God's house out. There are those today that are hungry. And they need our prayer. And it's time to love everyone. Time to spread that love. Time to look for higher heights to attain We've got Pikes Peak right out the door. That's over 14,000 feet. It's time to climb the high mountains, take the higher trails, and to get to the precipice and let God work in and through us and to baptize new ones in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thanks be to Jesus. Picking up. At Genesis, the sixth chapter and the third verse says this, my spirit will not always strive with man. God gives to us golden opportunities and now is the time to grasp that as God is with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. It is time to rally and to encourage your brothers and your sisters in the Lord. Time for us to see miracles performed as God moves in our lives. The third verse, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either we will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the others. You cannot serve God 
and mammon. As I said, I want everybody, and I feel this from the Lord strongly, to be there on Wednesday nights. This is a time where we delve into different things. We're just finishing up, armed with the word. And Bible study is precious. We are delving into the word of the Lord. The Lord has said, hey, I'm going to do a new thing. Are we ready for a new thing? Are we watching and praying? Are we expecting new things? Are we expecting a mighty revival in this church? Are we looking and expecting that every chair out there will be filled? It's time to work. Time to visit. Time to reach out to others where they can enjoy the wonderful peace of mind and the love of the Lord that we enjoy every single service. And I believe sometimes we take it for granted. But God always moves. And by the time service is over, how many here have found by that time, you're feeling pretty good. Not because it's over. <laughs> Not because it's over. I want to clarify that now. But because of the spirit we feel from the get-go. These singers and musicians, can you give them a great hand today? Beautiful singing. They'll be on our video on live stream. We're putting the singing and everything on there now. So when you watch it, know that you're going out to millions of people if they want to log on. And I'm looking forward to when we go on television. And this place is going to be packed out. I pray that we'll have to find another place just to have church. The auditorium over here seats 1,200 where we had our play at. God added 3,000 to the church in one day. There were over, if you say approximately, when he spoke to the people, the Lord said in his scripture, it says there were 5,000 plus the women and children. Now back then, they had 12 kids sometimes. So figure it. 5,000 men. So it's somewhere to 20 to 30,000 people. And they listen intently to the Lord. I pray that I can get the message that the Lord would have me speak to this great people. And my prayer is that you are uplifted, that you're encouraged, that I can lead and direct down the straight and narrow path by sharing with you the words of the Lord that are poured out in my heart. It is an honor to be here today and to be able to speak to you. And we pray, those that are sick, we just had prayer. How many here can believe that's going to get well? Amen. Amen. You cannot serve God and man. Daily, we should pray. If it's 10 minutes that you set aside for you and God, that's better than nothing. Whatever your prayer life is, make it be a little longer for new things. The Lord wants us to do that new thing. He wants to rain down his spirit that we just read to baptize those in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And ye shall receive, the, not a maybe, and ye shall receive the gift of what? The Holy Ghost. We just can't serve the world and God. He knows the hairs numbered on our head. So imagine how God can look at the heart, look at the mind, and see and know every thought that we have. It's incredible. It is mind-blowing to me that our God can do these things. But if the Bible says it, know that it's true. It's the Word of God. And it doesn't fall to the ground.
He told Peter in Luke the fifth chapter, four through seven. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, and this is what we're talking about today, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we have to toiled all the night. Now, maybe how you feel. Maybe you have toiled and done everything you know to do in inviting people, working to get people here. And as I said in the message last time, if you've got to go out and have a cup of coffee with them, if you've got to buy their dinner, regardless of what it takes, the Lord didn't say just ask. He said, compel. Compel. And I read that to you last week. Almost forcibly. Think on that a minute. Now, we're not going to grab them by the hair unless we have to. <laughs> Let down your nets for a draught. We've toiled all the night and have taken nothing. This that I'm talking about today in this message is to you to be a blessing and to look at the capabilities that God is able. Look how he can move and how he can work. And even Peter, he said, we toiled all the night. But there's a few words I want you to hear. We have toiled all the night. And we have caught nothing. But nevertheless, at thy word, I'll do it. And when he did, Threw the net over. Then it was filled to the point where they had to get another boat over there. And to help that the nets break. That's the kind of expectancy I'm talking about. We've got to be looking for, not thinking, I've toiled all the night. No, let God work where we can't. Let him do what we don't have the capability to do unless he's in the picture. Peter got out of the ship or the boat and he walked to the Lord. And the only time that he began to sink is when he took his eyes off the Lord. If we take our eyes off the Lord and try to follow him, it's not going to happen. We've got to keep our eyes stayed on the church. Stayed on the master. This church is not called the master's house for just any reason. It's called the master's house because, man, he moves with his spirit. He baptized us with his spirit. If you've been filled with the Holy Ghost already. Every time that we gather in this church is an opportunity that you don't want to miss. Think of it. Lost opportunities. How many times have we gone home when we needed prayer at that altar? This place is a holy place. This is coming before the cross. This right here in this tabernacle, friend, it's time to work together as we never have before. And we work together as a team many times, but it's different. This year is different. I told my wife, it's going to be different this year and this election. Was it? A little different. They call it a movement. Sometimes people don't even realize what they're saying when they say certain things. But our ears should perk up. Our heart and our mind, we need to get excited about Jesus. We don't need, only need to serve him simply because he loves us and we love him. We need to get excited about talking, communing, having a watch night service where we'll have Holy Communion. We need to get excited about being together where two or more are gathered there. He's in the midst. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put what? Ten thousand to flight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Clap like you mean it. Amen. 
Every time the doors are open, be here. Unless it's a rehearsal night. And if you're supposed to be rehearsing, then be here. Jesus, you're too late. John eleven twenty one. 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. You read that scripture and on down there it says Jesus wept. If you want to learn the scripture, that if you're ever called on, say, quote a scripture. Jesus wept. That's about the simplest one I can think of. Jesus wept. But he did weep. Why? I believe part of it was he knew when he said, Lazarus, come forth. His friend, his confidant, came forth. They told him by now, he stinketh, Lord. But he came forth. The stone was rolled back. And friends, he can raise the dead to life. Amen. If you had only been here, I'm going to tell you something that I want you to take to heart. Jesus is never too late. When we go through a trial and we feel as though we're alone, we're not. Jesus is with us. And as I said, if God be for you, who can be against you? It is a time to rally. A time to let the Lord do what he wants to do. He wants to bless in a new way. And sometimes it may seem to us, how can he bless greater than he's already blessed? Oh, friend, I challenge you. Call on the name of Jesus and say, Lord, the pastor said this. If I put my tr trust and my faith and my confidence in the Lord, he'll act. He'll move. No matter what's going on, he's just in time. How many have found that to be true? Can I see your hands? Everybody. Everybody. And we say, Lord, but we can't see you. Ezekiel, can these bones live? Remember these two words? Thou knowest. Ezekiel 37, verse 1 through 3. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Whatever's going on in your life today, he knows. If you need the Lord to turn around some things, he knows. He knows us better than we know ourselves. We are his children. Never forget it. We have that high calling of the Lord. Which we are to remember every single day. The Bible says let God be true and every man a liar. When God says he can do it, then it's going to get done. Can you say amen with me? Amen. Remember, now these bright lights are on me. So if you try to sneak out. Can these bones live? Maybe you've got relatives. Maybe you've got friends. They are dead in the world until they are born again in the spirit. You don't believe it? Then look at the prodigal son. He said, this is my son which was dead. And now he's alive. And he said, kill the fatted calf. He put a ring on his finger. He said, hey, my son, the prodigal son, he's home. And now he is alive. This is the impact you can have on individuals. Remember, if they're not serving the Lord, 
That's where they are. They're in this world looking for something. You have the something. And not forget that. You have the something. Share it with them. Give your testimony. Let the Lord work. Let him move. And you will be amazed at what the master can do. Praise his name, Jesus. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I told you I was going to hit on a number of messages that have been preached in about the last three months. In the fiery furnace. Because they were not going to bow down to an idol God. They stood and they were counted. And if you stand and you're counted for the Lord, then friend, they can heat that fiery furnace up, but it's not going to matter. Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, I see a fourth, and it looks like the Son of Man. I said, it looks like the Son of Man. They weren't in there alone, just like I mentioned a while ago. No, the Lord was in there with them. Wake up. The Lord was in there with them. They came out, and not even the smell of smoke was on them. Now, think about that. Say, well, you know, that happened in the Old Testament. I don't know. You know, we're living in the new. Folks, I could spend from now till Wednesday to the next service telling you the things that God did in the New Testament. He moved. Just read the book of Acts. Just that chapter or that book alone. Start in the first chapter and move on. And let God touch you. If there's not prayer in your life every day, you're missing something. Amen. We need it. Just like your automobile needs gasoline. We need to be in the same mind as the Lord. We need to be on the same page as the Lord. The way that comes, remember when the disciples came to Jesus. And they said, we cannot cast out the devils. And the Lord said... It is, without, it is with prayer and what? And fasting. You don't just, and it also says in these books, lay hands on no man suddenly. God gives us instruction and direction. I told my wife, I said, do you realize every question on some place or another, every question in our life the answer is in that book. Amen. Think about that a minute. Every question you have, I believe, is in that book. Even some of the carnal things. There are people that wrote that book that were used of the Almighty God. And if we follow that scripture, we will not fail. There's a fourth. I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Oh, how he's with us, and we don't even know it. He doesn't send you somewhere that he's not with you. We need to pray and pray and fast and pray and fast and pray. And you will see God move in your life differently than he has ever moved before. When he says, I'm going to do a new thing, this last day revival, folks, 2016, on up. God is raining down. And I first verse I started with today, God is raining down and pouring down his spirit. You can tell when somebody 
has that kind of walk with God. Because you hear what comes out of their mouth, and you hear, and you see, and you feel, there is something different about that individual. Why do they have that glow? Because, friend, Jesus is the light. He's the life. He's everything and anything that is good. Thank you. The good shepherd leaves the 99 and goes to find the one. Luke, the 15th chapter, and I'm going to begin from the 18th verse. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Humility. Humility. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet afar off, his father saw him. And he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned. Why can't we... Why can't we, and some do, many do, why can't we just admit when we're wrong? You know, God can deal with a person when they can't admit there is something wrong with me. Not my brother, not my sister. The Lord may lay someone on your heart, pray for them. And go to them, encourage them with the love of the Lord. We have to humble ourselves before the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it's broke, let God fix it. So many people in this world are looking for answers. And folks, this church has the answer. This isn't boasting. I have watched the Lord pour out His Spirit for many years, almost 35 years. I have watched the Lord move in different ways. Sometimes I look at certain things and I think, Lord, what are you doing? What am I doing? What needs to be done? Think on that just a second. I'm doing what needs to be done. We have to move in love. As new ones come through those doors, we want to greet them. And this church is full of love. And we care about those that are out there that don't know Jesus. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And no, I'm no, more, no more worthy excuse me, to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put, him, put it on him and put a ring upon him, upon his finger and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. Praise the Lord. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf. Because he hath received him safe and sound. That one that you may wonder if they ever can get in church. Ask yourself the question, what have I done? What 
have I done to get them there? This message is, a, I hope, a moving message. We're touching a little bit on a number of things. But I wanted to touch on God is in control. Never doubt it. Lazarus, come forth. And he did. Lord, you're too late. No. He's just in time. He's just in time. This father loved his sons. And the Lord seen to it. As he always does. Those are the parable. Still yet. It ministers to the heart. Thou art ever with me. And all that I have, all I, all I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. A man went to see uh, the movie the other night, Hacksaw Ridge. And there was a young man that plays in it and he wouldn't carry a gun. He was a medic. And I'll tell you this a little bit because you may want to go see it. But that young man saved 75 men. 75 men. It's a moving, moving story. And friend, we need to do the same. Well, men, women, boys, girls. We need to reach out and let God be in charge. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because you are offering to them what money cannot buy. Can you say amen? amen. Philippians 3.14 I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 3 the God of my rock and whom I will trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. We don't want to be as a reed blown in the wind. One day we're this way. Another day we're this way. We can't make up our mind what we need to do. You know what the problem is there? We shouldn't make up our mind. We should let the Lord do it. Sometimes getting self out of the way makes room for the Lord to come in. Amen? Crawl on your knees if you have to to get to that altar. But get what God wants you to get. It is not playtime. The Lord has brought us to a new dimension in time. And he's ready to move with the outpouring of his spirit. He's ready in your life to do a new thing. The beautiful singing that we have. Hey, it's all going out on live stream for people to listen, to watch, and hopefully blessed. They'll be blessed when they hear this singing. And maybe this preached word will even bless them. But that's our goal. We got a whole lot of new equipment for one reason. So that we could reach others. We could put what goes on in this house right in the, what do you call the place where we're at? The live stream. What is it? YouTube, thank you. On YouTube. Did you know those young men that invented that? You know what they sold that for? Two billion dollars. I think they were still teenagers. Amazing. But I want to tell you something. If we're not looking and expecting God to do the special things you may be seeking him for, if there's no expectancy, then you won't be disappointed. Remember that. If there's not the expectancy, you have no room. 
to complain. If you didn't vote, unless you had good reason, those that don't vote, I don't think they have any say to get out there and put somebody down. That is a privilege that we've been blessed with. But I want all the Lord has for me. I want all the Lord has for you. For you to reach out, believe, and serve the Lord in a special way. God wants us to come before him. To deal with whatever needs to be dealt with. And you talk to him like your best friend. Because like, he is. Amen. Let's thank the Lord today.